Hello, I'm Lima Alpha 6, November Charlie Alpha. Fu Spech F. It just arrived in my lab. It is very compact and solidly made. It is rare that the lid comes with it. On the inside of the lid are printed connection diagrams and instructions for use. The Germans were very good at designing user-friendly radio products. With good user guides. This radio is designed so that the Panzer soldiers could have perfect communication without much radio training. The first thing I do is remove dust with a paintbrush. Then I check that all buttons and controls can operate properly. Everything seems to work satisfactory. I open the radio with the screws marked with a red ring. The red ring indicates that the user can open them. This radio is designed for armored personnel carriers. This is both transmitter and receiver for voice communication. It has very few control buttons, so that operation is very simple. Communication in the Panzer unit became very reliable with such quality equipment. The German radios were incredibly well built. That's how we like to see it. The radio is made up of cast metal boxes. There are aluminum lids all over. Each section of the radio has its own box with shielding. I will now test and repair it before it is ready for use. We jump forward a few weeks. After intense repair work with the radio, I'm now in uh, Stavern and uh, I will now try to call LFM X-ray India Alpha in Larvik. This is my first QSO with this radio. I have designed and built a GP antenna for 15 meters based on a German World War II mast. At the top of the mast, there is a vertical antenna of 3.36 meters. Here, I mount the antenna on the mast. The three bar dunes act as a ground plane. The length out to the insulator is 3.54 meters. It is then ready to be set up. This is a perfect antenna for Fusbrech.f. Hope it works. Never tested. Then I'll hook up the radio. Battery, power, and radio are on the table. I plug in the power cable for the radio. Since it is the first time I am using this antenna, I connect the power and SWR meters on the antenna cable. Also because the instrument on the radio does not work. I connect the 12 volt battery.
Then I connect to speaker. Fusspresh.f contains a powerful speaker amplifier. Here I connect the throat microphone. They used throat microphones because they are not sensitive to the noise in a Panzer vehicle. I'm ready to call. The frequency is locked to 21.2 megahertz before I left home. Sets the antenna tuner to maximum output. Normally the operator would now set the instrument to max output, but I have to look at the external one instead. LA5 Extra India Alpha, this is LA6 November Charlie Alpha, over. LA6 November Charlie Alpha, this is LA5 Extra India Alpha, I heard it, but it's a little bit swag, come. Yes, it's a good thing, you are 5 and 5 here, 5 and 5, how is my modulation, over? You are 5 and 7 with me, 5 and 7, it's a swag modulation. Det er mottatt. Takk for rapport. 7-3, LA5 Extra India Alpha. Dette er LA6 November Charlie Alpha. Over. Ja, LA5 Extra India Alpha. I will now show what I had to do with the radio before it was ready. The pins in the power connector were corroded. I polish them with sandpaper. Difficult, so I use a drill. All banana connectors for microphone, speaker, and key had to be cleaned. I use cleaning and lubricating spray. Then I take a banana plug and rotate in the hole. The same should be done with the tubes. Clean and lubricate, and then move the tubes in and out several times. I connect a speaker with lab cables. I have made small power contacts for heating and the anode voltage. There are small brass tubes with three millimeter holes. I have compressed the tube a little at the outer end. I have connected two power. Heating is 12 volts. Anode is 100 volts. I start with a low voltage. I turn on the radio. It is very promising. I get noise in the speaker. I connect a signal generator, a M modulation, 21 megahertz with 100 microvolt signal. I must have an antenna cable. A weak signal can be heard. The volume control is scratchy. It gets better with some use. Receiver input tuning. Then I found the reason for the weak receiver. 
The ground terminal is not connected inside the radio. By turning the volume control up and down like this, the scratching will disappear. Since ground is not connected, it picks up radio stations. I will now test the transmitter. The anode voltage is now set to 250 volts. Microphone connector. Nothing happens when I press the microphone. I will open it and find the fault. See the amazing shielding of the electronic parts. Here we see the antenna's ground terminal without connection. This is the keying relay cable, not soldered. I believe this is the work of the previous owner. I think I need to replace this tube. Another loose wire. Here is the transmit receive relay. This is the most central component in the radio. This relay is not working properly. It appears that the two parts of the axle are twisted out of position. I was not able to see it has happened. It was necessary to glue on a layer of fiberglass on one side. I almost thought the radio had never worked. Now everything works better. Here we see the nine switches in action. The frequency button can be fixed. Here we see how. The radio was set to the correct frequency before use. This is the fantastically accurate tuning capacitor. Many small plates that can be bent for proper fine-tuning of the frequency. Here is the oscillator with all the tuning capacitors for transmitter and receiver. The oscillator changes frequency when receiving. Here is the receiver. See the wonderful mechanical construction. See how the tube is mounted. Fascinating. Finally, after hours and days of work, it is ready. We hear the big relay working. I measure the signal from the transmitter with an SWR instrument. On the oscilloscope, I see the signal and the modulation. The radio is ready, but I need an antenna. Here I have designed a ground plane antenna for 21.2 MHz. I have found a World War II German mast, which I will use for an antenna. I cut a small copper plate for the cable. I have made a tube with threads that I screw down onto the insulator. This copper plate is for the cable from the radio. 
Here we see the Cox connection. The center conductor is soldered to the antenna. The length of this cable is part of the antenna. I have made three such ground planes, which are part of the mast's bar dunes. Now all the parts are made. I'll put them together. The original German mast have smart locks. Eight millimeter threads that fit in the insulator. Here we see how the cable is mounted. Here is one of the three ground plans. This is connected to the Coke screen with a screw. Second ground plane. See the fine insulator at the end of the wire. And the last one comes here. Now the ground plane is in place. Here is the vertical antenna that will stand on the insulator. On the top element, I have made an adjustable tube for adaptation to the correct frequency. Here we see the result. Now we are going to try it for the first time. The radio worked uh, very well. So uh, thank you for watching. Camera, Marianne Mirzva. Thanks to LA5XIA. Please leave a comment and hit the subscribe button if you liked my video. 73.